Top 10. Yes. Top 10 internet channels that are popular, you should delete. Top 10 internet channels that are popular, but you should delete. Give it to us. All right, what should you delete? Now, I know that there are plenty of Christian channels out there, and they can be larger than the ones that I'm giving, but what I'm talking about is the popular, not the number of subscribers, but the popularity. Because you can have approximately 500,000 subscribers, but a lot of people in the community don't know who you are. So I'm covering internet sites, so this is not just YouTube, internet in general, that are extremely popular, but you should delete. This crowd, I'm noticing they're rising, and now they're my, almost my public enemy number one. But I see them, they were rising now. And this all ties to dispensationalism again, but now it's turning to the King James Bible issue. All right, so we're going to start out with number nine. What about ten? Uh, we'll go to ten later, okay? But we're going to start out with nine. So here's ten, here's nine. Nine is Jeff Durbin. Jeff Durbin, he's getting <clears throat> popular because he's, he's now catching the trend on YouTube with the titles, so he's catching it now. He's also catching it where he has to do conversations with people, and people are interested in debates. Through that, a lot of people get fooled by him trying to defend traditional Christianity against different cults out there, which is good, don't get me wrong about that. But he is a Calvinist, he is anti-King James only, and he is not a dispensationalist. So, Apologia Studios, approximately 176,000 subscribers and 129. So, he is getting popular. He is the one who is becoming the protege of James White later on, which is where number eight comes in is James White. James White is not a popular, is not too much of a popular YouTube channel. But if you look at his videos, he has a large amount of views. Another thing is that if you do type him on the internet, he is popular for his debates. So it doesn't have to necessarily be his channel. He is famous in his debates against the King James Bible issue. That is one of his specialties, which is why modern version scholars, because they are weak, they are frail, they don't know how to argue against the King James Bible issue, they turn to a guy who is a quote-unquote doctorate, but they have to turn to this guy for debating against the King James Bible issue, even though he is not in the prestigious doctorate level as the other modern version scholars and the other doctorates. Why? Because he has a gift of gab compared to them. But not only that, if you're arguing for modern versions, it's a really hard argument. So you need the gift of gab guy to do it. Jeff Durbin learns a lot from James White. He is number eight. In his sermon, if you go to sermonaudio.com, the top, the top 30 or top 50 sermons that you'll look up, one of them is James White. Skype show from Tuxin. That's the title of a sermon. What in the world? And that has 26,510 in sermonaudio.com. Calvinists dominate the internet. The other one is Matt Slick. Number seven is Matt Slick. This is the slickest guy you'll ever meet. Just You want to see the two biggest jerks on debating is Matt Slick and James White. Two of the biggest jerks together. Jeff Durbin, he's just learning how to be a jerk from James White. He's got to avoid him if he wants to debate better. But anyway, Matt Slick, the reason why is because if you type down a Bible question online, you probably saw this website. It is carm.org, otherwise known as Christian Apologetics and Research Ministry. He has also, to my knowledge, he has also done a debate <clears throat> against Jesse Morrell, one of those street preachers. So he's the only Calvinist that I know of who actually did a formal debate against those street preachers. What do they both share in common? Oh, Lordship Salvation. <laughs> There's no difference between them. One is more of, you have to use free will effort on it. The other one is, God will do it. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the other one, 
is Michael Hudeman. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Michael Hudeman. Who is he? If you t the reason why he's higher in number six is when you type down a Bible question online, his site pops out most of the time. It's called gotquestions.org. Type down a Bible question, he pops out. This man, he is not five point, but he is four point Calvinist. Now, do you know a recent, uh, do you notice a, uh, a trend right here, what I'm getting at right here? Calvinist. Calvinists, that's my first word for the publish. <laughs> Calvinists are the ones who are dominating the internet. Yep. You should avoid them. Some of you people are like, oh my goodness, what did I miss out? Top 10 popular internet pages that you should delete and you should keep track. But we have all this in archive video, so if you missed it live, don't worry about that. But you're just going to have to wait patiently till the archive video comes out. The other one is Todd Friel. Who is Todd Friel? Todd Friel, you probably saw this YouTube channel. Now, I want all of you who are watching, look at your subscription list. You probably had no, no idea, but you accidentally subscribed to them. The reason why is because these YouTube videos pop out very commonly. When you type down a search question on Google, these are the guys that pop out most commonly. I knew that they were going to become more popular as time passed by. Todd Friel. His YouTube account is called Wretched. So if you see some skinny guy up there with the real this kind of accent, you know, like really smooth, and then he acts and a little entertaining and funny, and then he's got like uh, several screens around him. And so that guy is actually Todd Friel. So he's been famous because it's been enter uh, his he's caught the trend on YouTube as well with the titles. Not only that, he's very entertaining but he also co cover apologetics, like Jeff Durbin. People who want to study more on debate issues and arguments, it is the Calvinists that dominate it. The other one is Ray Comfort. Ray Comfort. You might say, why Ray Comfort? Now, Ray Comfort, actually, he should be on a higher plane, but I'm going to put him as number four because he's not really a Calvinist. His YouTube channel, you should look at, is called Living Waters. You should unsubscribe from this. Now, Ray Comfort, he is not a Calvinist. As a matter of fact, I have some Bible believers, and I'm not going to name the situation of friends, but I have some Bible believers who are from our crowd who actually been in touch with him, and he's very sympathetic toward us. You know why? Because he's the one that's most sincere in heart and does a lot of evangelism work. When you do that, you're going to get more sympathetic toward us. But why can't he separate it? Because he, one, of connections. Two, he's heavy into apologetics. Who are the ones who have all the power of connections in apologetics? It's not Bible believers. We know a lot of the Bible, but we don't have the power and the connection and popularity. It's the Calvinists. So Ray Comfort, how we know this is because the gospel that he preaches is, there, is he, what he learned from all these Calvinists right here. But not only that, his style of debates and all that, it is from these guys right here. So he, he takes a lot of arguments from the Calvinists. You can tell he learned from them. All you have to do is look up these Calvinist big names and see if Ray Comfort had connections with them, especially through Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron, his partner. All right. So, number three, but he's now becoming old news. Paul Washer. Paul Washer. As a matter of fact, Ray Comfort, as I go back over here, his subscribers is 375,000, over 375,000 subscribers for Ray Comfort. The top 30 or top 50 sermons, it includes Ray Comfort's sermon. 34,370 hits on sermonaudio.com. It's called Hell's Best Kept Secret. Number three is Paul Washer. The number one sermon hit on sermonaudio.com is Paul Washer. His sermon, number one, uh, it's called Shocking Youth Message Stuns Hearers. Over 273,220 hits. Paul Washer. 
This guy is the most scary guy you will ever hear concerning the salvation gospel more than any other person. He will make you doubt your salvation tenfold, questioning the real sincerity of your salvation. Number two is John MacArthur. John MacArthur. The title of his YouTube channel, which I'm sure most of you who are watching me online have subscribed to by accident or probably deliberately, is called Grace to You. Now, I'm really serious. Look at your subscription list. If you see any of these, please unsubscribe. Don't contribute to this heresy that's growing right here. The Calvinists are dominating the Internet. John MacArthur's YouTube channel is over 240,000. 240,000. SermonAudio.com, his sermon is hit number three most in popularity. It's titled, How Can We Witness If We Don't Know What the Gospel Is? Now, you notice with all these most popular sermons, it has to do with scaring your salvation, questioning if you really repent it. This is a lordship salvation Calvinist trend. His, the hits on his sermon is 113,940 on SermonAudio.com. Number one. This is the drum roll noise, okay? Number one. Can some of you probably guess maybe? And he's a big shot Calvinist preacher. John Piper. John Piper. His channel is called Desiring God. And I've had some people who accidentally subscribe from that and they actually unsubscribe when I mentioned it. His subscription is over, actually he has the largest subscription on YouTube out of all these people. 380,000 subscribers. Desiring God, John Piper. He is very famous. He is number one. Number 10, which we have dropped, but I will return to. Why did you do this, Pastor? Because I want to include all of the other names who are not mentioned but you would have saw this before. Sai Ten Brugengate. He's been very popular with his debates against atheists. And I'll be honest with you, some of it is good, but when, you, when they actually caught him on his tactic method and they pointed him out on that, especially his debate with Aaron Raw, that was like, oh my goodness, it was horrible. It was a horrible debate. Sai Ten Brugengate. Yeah, I know, I don't like him either, brother. R.C. Sproul, he's dead now, but he was one of the early people before MacArthur. And uh, he was the guy who laid down the heaviness of Calvinism. His YouTube is still out there, and a lot of big shot Calvinists, they all still look up to his ministry. Ligonier Ministries. The other one is Steve Lawson. Now there are other Calvinist names that you're going to find out. So that's number 10. So what's my point? My point is, is that these guys are going to dominate YouTube, and these guys do not believe the King James Bible only is perfect. So they're going to cast doubt on the viewers. Number two, when you want to defend your Christian faith, it's not Bible believers. It will turn to these Calvinists. Number three, the heresy of Calvinism will then sneak in and influence all the onliners. Number four, they are not dispensationalists, so you can find errors with their teachings. By the way, do you know what the enemy camp of dispensationalism is? You don't know this. It's Calvinists. In theological studies, the main branch that's against dispensationalism is Calvinists. Those who claim to be IFB, King James only, and they're against dispensationalism, they're a weird cultic fringe. They have no idea, but they're joining this Calvinist camp. And that camp is called Covenant Theology which I will cover to you later on. But, major, but a lot of fundamentalist pastors, they're joining this Calvinist doctrine called covenant of grace, which is against dispensational salvations. This is the top ten you should avoid. Now, I know conspiracies and all that is popular, but what do you think YouTube is doing? They're filtering it, right? If you go by ads... And if you're a popular pastor, then who, and if you are knowledgeable in the Bible, then who's the next group that's going to dominate the Internet? Calvinist. They're dominating the Internet now. So it's changing. The conspiracy trend is changing now. 
It's turning toward the Calvinist trend. The time, the end times thing, it's still mighty popular still. But the Calvinist trend, they're going to rise now. Watch out for them, church. Amen? All right? All right, I've warned people online too. Please don't contribute to the growth of their ministries. They are dangerous. Because I'm King James Only Dispensationalism, Calvinists right now are on my site. And I will keep exposing it without apology to rescue as many souls as possible by the grace of God. 